What's up, everybody? This is Under the Arc Sports. I'm Eric. I'm David. And I'm Deuce from Mizzou Pride. Today, we are going to recap the 2020 football season for the Missouri Tigers. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and find us on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, guys, you know, we're supposed to be getting ready to, to watch the uh, Music City Bowl against Iowa, but COVID, you know, what else is new? So season's over, 10 games, five and five. What do y'all think overall about the season? Well, I think for the most part, it was kind of shocking. I had us maybe at two or three wins at the beginning, but there was a lot of games that surprised me, especially the LSU and Kentucky games. As for me, um, I actually predicted at the beginning of the season, Mizzou would go five and five. I have Missouri going two and eight. You have Missouri at five and five. Now, they didn't go get the games I thought they were going to win, and they won some different games that I thought they weren't going to win. So that kind of surprised me. But other than that, I'm pretty happy that uh, my prediction came true and we had a five and five season. Yeah, you know, I, I was with Deuce, and I had two and eight. I had wins over Arkansas and Vanderbilt. Um, but really, the story of the season is that Sean Robinson started the first two games, got yanked. Connor Bazelak took over, and you know, maybe opinions were inflated a little bit by the LSU game as his first start. But for a freshman quarterback coming in, he did well. Yeah, he stabilized our offense, which is what we needed at the time. Yeah. Um, how far he can take our offense in the future, I'm not sure. I know there's some weaknesses he needs to work on, such as his deep ball. But other than that, uh, I mean, I think the sky could be the limit as long as we have the tools to work with that. Yeah, that's, that's the key. Uh, you know, there wasn't – a whole lot for Bays like to work with as far as receivers. Kiki Chisholm was the leading receiver, 35 catches, 458 yards. Those are okay numbers in no universe whatsoever. Should those be the leading numbers, both receptions and total yards? Those should never be the leading numbers for a Mizzou football team, but they were. Now, but you said it. Maybe getting better receivers in here can help Mizzou uh, and Bazelak specifically with deep ball, taking the top off of the opposing defense. But, you know, it's not like it's not like Bazelak has the job locked down going forward. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, Deuce, look at the defense. Your boy, Nick Bolton, man. What do you think about him? Yeah, my boy Nick Bolton, he had a great year. Um, I'm still kind of shocked that they gave him second team all SEC and then he's an All-American, but you know how that goes. Uh, well, yeah, you know, he had 95 tackles in just 10 games. And, um, you know, there's nothing confirmed, but a lot of thought that he played the last two games um, hurt. You know, not to mention the fact that he had that targeting call and he missed half the game against Arkansas. So if he stays healthy and doesn't get the questionable, call it, uh, targeting call, you know, he's probably north of 100 tackles in 10 games, which is a crazy. Um, you know, the secondary, that was that was an adventure, wasn't it, y'all? <laughs> Well, when you have a couple of freshmen out there, it's always going to be an adventure. Um, I, the good news is there's nowhere but up to go uh, in the yeah. next couple of years, especially with the freshmen playing on their corners. Um, major upside in that area. However, I do think the defense needs to get some depth at D-line and get some pass rushers going again like we had in years past. Otherwise, again, your secondary is going to be hung out to dry. Yeah, you know, you have one, let's see, four total interceptions by the 
by the defense. Uh, and one of those was a linebacker, uh, Devin Nicholson, with that pick to end the Carolina game. Uh, and one was by Sean Robinson, a former quarterback. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, Deuce, what, what, what do you think? What do you think about, about the secondary? What, what did you see? Well, I've seen a lot of struggle, but like you said, there's a lot of, <laughs> there was a lot of young guys in there that they had to, you know, switch in and out. But for the most part, they were getting beat all year long. But yeah. there like, like you guys also stated, there was no pass rush either. So you're leaving them out there to dry, like David said. Well, yeah, what? you know, um, you look at, at the secondary and – you didn't have guys getting beat on like home run balls where they just bit on like a, like a hitch and go or something where they bit on the hitch and they're, and the guy they're supposed to be covering is 20 yards behind them. That happened a couple times, but not often. A lot of times what would happen is they'd be one step behind. They'd be close enough to where they could make the tackle as soon as that the ball was caught, but it wasn't until the ball was caught. You know, so well, and the secondary played a lot of man defense. Yes, um, I would be interested to see if Walters in the future will take a look at this year and make adjustments and see more zone play in the scheme of things. Yeah, you know, I um, when it comes to Walters, what what I noticed was that a lot a lot of man, like you said, the message boards were absolutely exploding. Um, in the Mississippi State game that he refused to play zone. And Ryan Walters was in uh, quarantine due to contact tracing for the South Carolina game, right? So um, what well, Coach uh, Gibbs, right, he took over as defensive coordinator for that game, and you saw blitzes out of the secondary. And you didn't see that uh, with any consistency the rest of the season. And it worked in that game. Granted, Carolina's terrible, but you had three sacks out of the secondary in that game. So I want to see more of that. Me too. That was a good game. Yeah. Overall, um, I think this season is going to pay huge dividends for the secondary in about two years. When Ennis Rakestraw, J.C. Carleys, when they've seen everything, I think, I think this is going to serve them well down the road. Um, now taking a look back at the season, what do y'all think, uh, if you had to choose one moment, uh, Dave, let's start with you. What, what, what would be your moment, uh, or stretch of the season that comes to mind for you? Um, I'd talk about the Kentucky game a little bit just because, it was a completely different style of offense from the LSU game, and it was yeah. complete dominance by the offense. Um, specifically, they had a 21-play drive that took nine and a half minutes. Now, they didn't score because they went for it on a fourth down and didn't make it. But, I mean, 21 plays for nine and a half minutes, the, you're keeping the other side off the field. That's amazing. Yeah. You just don't see I, that. No, I that's the that's the longest drive I've ever seen. Deuce, what about you? My shining moment of the season would be the 25-yard touchdown pass that Brady cooked through to Hazelton. I think right there we've seen the future. Your boy. Word, I think he's our guy. You are all in on Brady Cook, huh? I'm on the Brady Cook train. <laughs> now, quick take. You think he's a starter next season? I think it's going to be a hard quarterback fought battle, but I think he takes the job. And going oh. forward, he's going to be our guy. All right. As for me, my moment for the season, going back to the LSU game, right at the very end, the, uh, the goal line stand, that fourth down, uh, keeping LSU out of the end zone, mm. getting win number one for Coach Drink against the defending national champions. They, you know, they ended up okay, but at that point they were not good. 
But either way, still the defending national champions. And it was it was a statement. So for me, that is the standout moment. Um, you know, I just realized, guys, we made it this far into the video. And we haven't talked about Larry Roundtree. So we're screwing up there. Dude had 972 yards in 10 games, averaging almost 100 yards a game for an offense that was okay behind an offensive line that was better than expected, but still not good and and not healthy good chunks of the season, right? Yeah, he was, but man, I tell you, he's going to go in the history books after this season. He was the fuel to our train the whole season on offense. Really stood out. Yeah. All right, so Roundtree had a fantastic year. However, one key thing I want to mention is when Mizzou was winning their games, they not only used Roundtree in their running game, but they also included Beatty not only for running but passing. Uh, by mixing both of those running backs together, that's when we seem to have the most balance on our offense. Uh, the games where our running game may have gotten shut down or we just didn't play that well, Beatty seemed to disappear from the play calling and he didn't seem out there much at all. Right, so Mizzou finished this in the season, five and five, third place in the SEC East. Looking at the results, they beat the really bad teams they got destroyed by the good teams. Tennessee game notwithstanding, everything else, if they were bad, they won. If they were good, they got crushed. Um, I, You know, guys, going into 2021, looking at a spring ball, there's a, there's a decent amount of guys coming in and rolling early. What are you looking for for this team going forward? Well, what I'm looking forward in the team going forward is finding some depth. We need some depth in the SEC. That was killing us against a lot of the good teams is because first half we'd play very good and then we'd flatten out. Talent would show. Yeah, I, feel, I feel if we build more depth on the team going forward, it'll we'll be in good shape. Yeah, I'm along the same lines. Plus, I like the fact that some of these guys are enrolling early because it gives them time to get the – the practice in before the next season and uh, they get some reps under their belts. Uh, the other thing is to continue to roll when it comes to recruiting. We pulled in a really good recruiting class this, for this 2021 season coming up. I'd like to see it continue to go in a positive direction. Yeah, and, you know, for me, the quarterback position, I think is going to be extremely important. Um, you're going to see Connor Bazelak have a full off season. Remember last year he shredded his knee in the Arkansas game and was in rehab, uh, getting his knee you know, back to normal, basically all spring and summer. And then Tyler Macon, the four-star recruit out of East St. Louis high school. He, yeah, he didn't have a senior season. East St. Louis high school is playing their spring football or their football in the spring. Well, he's enrolling early. So I think, having those 20 spring practices is going to kind of make up for not having a senior year. It's going to get the rust off. And what I think you're going to have is between those two and Brady cook, your boy deuce, I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens at the quarterback position. And I, I think Mizzou's going to have better quarterback play next season, regardless of who the starter is. Well, and based off the talent of those three quarterbacks, it'll be interesting to see which direction Drink wants to take the offense because he's the main mastermind on the offense. So he'll take whoever he thinks will give him the best option. Yeah, you know, I think based on the offense with, with, with the misdirection and timing and things like that, I think Tyler Macon is the type of quarterback that Coach Drink would have run his offense ideally, right? I mean, obviously he's going to play the best player, but I think he would prefer to have a dual threat kind of guy. Yeah, most definitely. I think uh, he is more of the pro protocol type of quarterback for uh, drink with system, but I don't know. I think the talent's going to show a Brady cook and my guy's going to get in there and steal the job. <laughs> 
Oh, man. We'll, we'll see if that happens. I think there's going to be some heads exploding if Brady Cook is a starting quarterback next uh, September. Whoever it is, I just hope they can throw the deep ball. Yes. Brady's our guy. He's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, the future for Mizzou football is bright. I think that's one thing everybody can agree on, right, y'all? Oh, absolutely. I think the future is heading in the right direction, especially once we get a few recruiting classes under drink spell. Yeah, it's really definitely going to be fun to see this team develop. Yeah, you know, even if this team takes a step back and maybe they're six and six, maybe even five and seven, I think they'll be better than that. But I think it's plausible if that happens. But you're seeing the program being built, even if a season like that happens in 2021, right? Right. Um, so I think looking at 2022, 2023, if recruiting goes the way this class had just signed went, yeah, a couple of years from now, Mizzou's going to be right there. Top 20 type of program challenging for the SEC East. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. I can't wait. Anyway, that's all we have for Under the Arc Sports. Uh, thank you again for watching, and thank you for Deuce for coming on as our guest uh, host, if you will. We've enjoyed having you. Um, for those of you out there, make sure you check out uh, Mizzou Pride on Facebook. It's a good group. See you all next time.